everyone, it's Reagan, and welcome to the start of a very gloomy weekend reading vlog. It looks like it's about to start pouring outside, which honestly, I would not be mad about. But it's Friday evening, I'm just wrapping up work, so of course I'm starting the beginning of another weekend reading vlog, but this reading vlog is extra special because it's actually a challenge-based reading vlog, which I'm so thrilled to be filming. So basically this video is actually in partnership with Penguin Teen and they challenged me to, drumroll please, to read the entirety of the Graceling Realm series in one weekend, which I am glad and honored to do. If you guys are not familiar with this iconic series, it's one of my all-time favorite fantasy series growing up. It honestly in introduced me to YA high fantasy and was a large part of big reason why I fell in love with it in general. And I have been wanting to revisit the series for years and this month felt perfect for a variety of reasons, but mostly because there's a new book coming out in the Graceling Realm series, Winter Keep, which is actually by the time this vlog goes up out now, we'll have information on where you can purchase and learn more of that book down below. But I am, again, thrilled to be filming this video when they challenged me to do this, I was like, yeah, it's like you're reading my mind or something. And I know a lot of you guys are huge fans of the Graceling series, and I'm particularly just excited to revisit this world because it had such significance to me um, growing up. Like, to read these books just means so much. I'm also thrilled because I have the new covers. I'm actually gonna flip you around and talk about each of the books in general. So ahead of this video, they actually sent me the newly released covers, which are absolutely stunning let me put them in order but my plan for this weekend is to yes read all of these books um, or attempt to read all of these books starting with Graceling then Fire then Bitter Blue. The Graceling Realm series is great because each one kind of in its own way acts as a standalone as each one focuses on its own primary main character but the politics and the world are all interwoven and connected in a very satisfying way particularly between Graceling and Bitter Blue there's a lot of political connections but in each of these you follow a new primary female main character and their trials and tribulations and political machinations that they have to work through um, and I just love them so much. Graceling is like a foundational novel to my life. Um, and Fire also destroyed me as well. And so did Bitter Blue, actually. I guess this was just an emotional ride from beginning to end. But yeah, I'm going to be rereading all of these books throughout the course of this weekend, starting obviously with Graceling and moving on through each one. Again, in preparation for Winter Keep, which is one of my most anticipated books of the year. I'm just thrilled to be back in this world. It's like coupling like nostalgia, but also just wonderful YA fantasy reads. I'm thrilled. But yes, that is the thought and premise of this video. I hope you guys are excited to follow along as I reread all three of these books and share my thoughts and feelings along the way. Um, again, big shout out for Penguin Teen for sponsoring this video and challenging me to do this as this is again, one of my all time favorite series. I'm excited to film this. It's going to be a bit of adventure, but welcome to the vlog. I'm actually going to put my work stuff away and grab a cup of coffee. This vlog, I'm obviously starting with Graceling, which is the first book within the Graceling Realm series. Funny story, um, I finished my book a little early last night, so I was like, oh, I'll start this and just get like 50 pages and get a little bit of a head start. Like, it's a lot of books to read in one weekend. You know, it'll help me a bit. Anyway, I read 250 pages of this book in 24 hours. I'll talk more in depth, but let's just say my reread of Graceling is going very well. And honestly, in some ways, I feel like I'm loving this book even more than I did the first time. Given that it was one of my favorite books growing up, I feel like that's saying something. But I don't know, I just really appreciate some of the decisions um, that Christian Keshor made, especially given the era when this was written for a YA fantasy tale. But I'm gonna get some coffee and I'll give you guys a synopsis of this and my initial thoughts and feelings as I'm over halfway through at the moment. <laughs> Ignore my messy counter, but ember mug. Coffee must be had. So to sit down and give you guys a brief synopsis of Graceling, um, the first book. This is set in the Seven Kingdoms and Bitter Blue is also set in the Seven Kingdoms, but within this first one, we primarily follow our main character, Katza. And in this fantasy world, um, the Seven Kingdoms are each ruled by different kings and they're all very much interconnected politically. You know, there's border skirmishes, a lot of politics at play in terms of which king is one maintaining their own hold and power over their own land 
but also sometimes ploying to gain more power from other lands that surround them. In addition, in this world, there are individuals who can be graced. What that means is you are born to be exceptionally good at something, and people know that someone's gonna manifest a grace because they suddenly have two different colored eyes, either when they're a baby or a small child. Graces can really range in what they are, from being great at swimming, to baking bread, to be an exceptional dancer. Our main character, Katza, is exceptional at killing. So because of this, she is a very important like figure within her own kingdom's court um, and she is used as a like enforcer or a strong arm to kind of maintain her king's power um, and she kind of struggles underneath this for a variety of reasons. One, people in general in this world don't trust people who have graces but particularly her grace has really given her a violent reputation. Two, she doesn't feel like she has much control over her life. She's constantly being sent off to do these very brutal missions and in a lot of ways she has no control over how she actually carries them out. And three, she also feels very stifled by court life. She doesn't want a lot of the traditional things that women are supposed to want, from marriage to having children. In a lot of ways, Katz is really struggling with just kind of making it day to day, but she's also really involved with kind of like a resistance network. And in a way to kind of gain some more control in her life, Katz essentially has created some something called the council, which is supposed to kind of circumvent a lot of what the damage she's forced to do in working for the king as the council kind of works as a non-partisan as it's not directly connected to one kingdom to help anyone and everyone in need and that is what the book essentially opens on at the beginning of the book Katza is on said one of those missions and that is to basically kidnap back the king of Lionid's father from another kingdom, which is confusing as an opening because this particular individual doesn't really have any political power and it's very unclear at the beginning of the novel the motivation as to why someone would kidnap him. So she's kidnapping him or trying to save him from being held into the dungeon, but also her and her allies within this council and the network are trying to uncover why someone would try to kidnap him and it seems to be like a larger multi-kingdom conspiracy so they're trying to work through that and so enters another key and important figure Poe who is the seventh son of the king of Lionid who has also come to the main kingdoms Lionid is an island to try and investigate why his grandfather was kidnapped as well and Katza and Poe begin to work together try to uncover this in more detail and that is kind of like where the sto story begins and where it starts but Honestly, it has been such a joy to begin to reread the series. One, Katza remains to be one of my favorite characters of all time. On the surface, there's the obvious reasons, given her grace of being very skilled at killing people. She's excellent at fighting and combat, and just in general, her, her skill set is one that's really fascinating to read about and really exciting in terms of like what she does throughout the book. She's a very capable individual, but also reading about Katza, she's also really relatable. I feel like Kristen Cashore is quickly able to make a very dynamic character that you just want to root for so much because so much of Katza is being so capable in her like physical handling of the world but she has a lot of uncertainty about how and what she wants to do with her actual life and in some ways she's just trying to figure out what is freedom to her, personal freedom, personal decisions, and her fighting to achieve that for herself. And throughout at least 50% of this book, a lot of Katza is grappling with is her being okay with her own decisions and doing things for herself um, despite the fact that so many people around her are like scared of her or want to use her and her kind of navigating that and kind of carving out her own piece which is awesome and obviously coupled with like she's on a quest which is great and part of that quest of course is along with Poe. Anyway this book has really swept me away immediately. I just I'm loving it a lot. I'm done with work. I've rambled on for minutes and minutes and minutes. <laughs> I love Graceling the second time around. Um, and I'm excited to vlog for you guys this weekend. So, all right. I did not get dressed today. <laughs> I've been wearing sweats all day and I obviously now that it's evening have no reason to get dressed, but I thought I would show you a OOTD. There's Matilda. This is it. These are actually some new sweatpants. I really like them because they're really high-waisted, you know, and roomy and comfortable. So, it's a win-win from an outfit perspective. I've personally officially finished up work for the day, so I am on weekend time. Clay still has a few more hours of work, so I am going to actually 
use that time to read given that I have a lot of pages I need to read. So I have Matilda here and my weighted blanket and I'm trying to get like another 100 or so pages in before Clay's done working. Other weekend plans, it's the same as usual guys. <laughs> read as much as possible, definitely apt for this weekend. Um, watch The Crown, we still need to start season three. I spent all of last week watching K-dramas so I haven't watched any crown since the last vlog um, and then we'll probably get some takeout and just hang out and relax go on a walk maybe this weekend but obviously laying low um, for obvious reasons so that's the overall weekend plan but now I'm going to sit and read I can't believe how quickly I'm reading this book I love Graceling I could talk about Poe every day to the rest of my life I've loved Poe since I was like 12 years old. <laughs> it's a 14 year long relationship, Poe and I. Um, anywho, I'm gonna read now. <laughs> it's me. Heavy on the reading updates early on in this vlog, being very productive. Um, but I've read another 50 pages and I feel like I've got to touch on my favorite part of this book, which is the romance. And this is an aspect of the story I feel like I appreciate more with time and age. And that is, and in so many ways, this romance and like how it's set up is kind of interesting, especially in comparison to a lot of the other books that were kind of coming out in this era. But I would say it's very popular in YA. And don't get me wrong, I'm a fan of this trend. Um, but I would say it's very popular in YA when there's a romance um, to create tension and angst and yearning by using a lot of miscommunication and people not being open and transparent about their feelings, causing a lot of back and forth and allowing that sort of romantic pairing to be drawn out over multiple books. This can be very successfully done and be incredibly entertaining. Graceling has a romance very much at the center of its book, but from the get-go for the most part, the romance is so much built on communication, transparency, talking about emotions, talking about goals, talking about... Just, there's just so much communication between Katza and Poe throughout this entire book that it just makes you melt for them and root for them and love this budding relationship so much. In a large part, the reason why they have to be so transparent has to do with Poe's grace as he is also a Graceling. Um, but just seeing sort of that foundation starting in friendship and seeing them grow to trust each other and just constantly being open about what they're feeling it's just a really lovely thing to see. And it's true, like, I have been, again, I've already referenced how much I love Poe, and he's just such a soft and sweet um, character within this book and really compliments Katza so well. She is much more stoic and um, given, like, her, her, her ability in combat, like, she's more quiet and not so interested in, like, connecting with people. It really warms my heart, I think is the word I'm trying to say. Like, and I just feel like, their romance through time is just one that feels like they actually do feel like they're perfect for each other. And um, Poe was my second book crush after Edward Cullen, so he just means a lot to me too, but I just, I don't know, like this romance and this I just feel like is really wonderfully done and a really good, you know, version of this within YA and I just really appreciate it, so I just wanted to shout that out too, but I don't have very much left, 150 pages, and I'll say the politics and everything are really heating up. This sort of intrigue around the kidnapped grandfather has led to a lot of questions about political alliances between all the different kingdoms, and you know, maybe one kingdom is hiding and using maybe some secret magic to kind of present a certain illusion to everyone else. It's getting really good, but I thought I would just kind of focus on some of my favorite aspects of the characters first. Clay finished work, so I'm about to go eat dinner and watch some TV. But I've read 100 pages, so I'm on page 350. <laughs> this book is already making me so emotional. Um, obviously, I'm almost done with this book. I read it so quickly. Honestly, it's been a bit of a whirlwind. But it's built up so successfully to this conflict um, and this evil, this evil individual in one of the kingdoms. And the quest itself that we have been following um, between Katza and Poe as they've been journeying there to try to kind of figure out this mystery. <sighs> it's just been so good and obviously the plot is kind of escalating into its endgame component and just like the terror and fear and the and this evil force that Kristen Kashore has built in this kingdom has definitely been successful and 
and it's just the two of them like trying to take it on and it's such a difficult task for a variety of reasons and it's just so intense and it's also like if you've read this book you know what i'm talking about hard decisions have been forced to have been made for the survival and the success of this quest and like for the greater good and for other individuals and it just it's breaking my heart but anyway it's time to watch tv and eat dinner but for now i had to set this aside <laughs> It's time for burgers and The Crown, oh no. The Crown season three. New cast, everyone. This is so exciting. The hate drama I've been watching, Cinderella and the Four Nights. So good, but anyway. Time for The Crown. After two episodes of The Crown, we've decided to watch WandaVision. Um, the first two episodes start were released tonight, which it looks really interesting and like, um, I don't know, very different than what I've seen like Marvel do before. What do you think? What's up? About WandaVision. Doesn't it look like it's gonna be like different? It looks like it's gonna be like kind of like weird. Like style very stylized. Yeah. Um so yeah, we're gonna check this out. I'm excited to see how it goes. Alright, we just finished the two episodes that were released for WandaVision. And it was so good. Like incredibly interesting, very bizarre, and kind of a lot. <laughs> Pretty artsy for what I feel like is normally happening in the MCU. Do you have any thoughts and feelings about it? I find it really compelling and interesting. And yeah. I like that they're not giving it to you all at once. Like, oh, you're all confused. Yeah. Here's the answer. It's yeah. like, oh, you're confused. Like, and like, I'm, here's a tidbit. Yeah. Here's a tidbit. For, yeah. For one, for me, that's like really satisfying. Yeah. It's also very successfully stylized. Like the aesthetic of the show, very well done. Um, so yeah, definitely we'll keep watching, but now it's time to read. I'm gonna finish Graceling tonight. I'm not sure if I'll check in. I might just wrap up the whole book tomorrow morning and then jump into fire, which cannot wait. Clay's reading his Winston Churchill book. Mm -hmm. The Splendid in the Vile. Mm -hmm. It's the first time reading this By author. Eric, Eric, Eric Larson. Larson also wrote Devil in the White City. Clay's really, really liking it. Mm -hmm. um, it so we're gonna read for a while. Wish me luck. Wish me some emotional luck for getting into the tail end of Graceling because I'm going to need it. But what a joy this reread has been. And I'm Fire is going to be so good too because I remember that one being also one that emotionally wrecked me. But anyway, good night, guys. Good morning, everyone. Starting the morning off very slow. Let me flip you around. I stayed up very late last night, but I did have a very successful reading evening. Saturday morning. I'm definitely gonna do more reading, but first, I think I'm gonna enjoy my cup of coffee and watch an episode of my K-drama. I have like four episodes left. It's very top of mind with me right now, so I just I have to know what's gonna happen next. So I'm gonna do that, and then I will talk about Greasling and then talk about Fire too. So first K-drama though. Cinderella and the Four Nights, guys, is just it. Watch it if you haven't, it's amazing. I made the really brave choice today to get dressed so I thought I would share it. <laughs> Hi everyone, so I've paused the hey drama. Um, even though I'm on the tail, it's so good. But I wanted to pop in and just quickly wrap up Graceling because I finished this last night. I read all of it pretty much yesterday um, and it's just under 470 pages so I'm very proud about that. But this reread was actually so easy breezy, kind of coordinating right now, loved it. Quest focus, classic fantasy with great romance, a great main character, lots of action wonderful like i'm so happy i reread this book one of my all-time faves growing up and it held up just as good but now it's time for me to start reading fire by christian cashore which i'm so excited about this was another all-time fave of mine growing up i've actually read it multiple times but i'm excited to re uh experience the story from the beginning so this actually follows our main character fire as i said each of the books kind of primarily follow a different main character and she's actually from like a different kingdom than the seven kingdoms it's like a neighboring kingdom and their monsters exist and fire is the last human monster and human monsters themselves i think have been like killed off and that's why she's the last one and they're known for having really bright hair her hair is bright red um and fire has the ability to actually compel minds which is a really interesting similarity to some of the to a character we found in the first novel and i think she's supposed to specifically kind of parallel 
that character in a variety of reasons. Um, she doesn't love her power. She doesn't want to compel people. She's not interested in being in other people's minds. She wants to keep her own secrets and just kind of try to make a life for herself. Um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to getting into this. I remember loving Fire and I think as a main character, she really contrasts Katza in a really interesting way and shows like a different type of strength, which I think is cool. I also remember the romance being amazing in this. So I'm looking forward to reading this. I'm going to try to get like a good 50 pages before lunchtime. So I'm going to sit down and read now. First Bagel off, time, Jeff, community six, time. Uh, also, I've read 50 pages. Out. I'm going to read more after Bagel. Hi, I'm in the exact same place as before because as I said, I've been reading. So I've already read 100 pages of fire and boy oh boy did I fly through this. Um, a lot of it was kind of setting up the world. Again, fire takes place in a different kingdom than Graceling, which is set in the Seven Kingdoms, and this is set in the Dells. And the Dells is a kingdom that has been kind of torn apart. I, the last king, King Nax, and his lead advisor, Cansrell, who was his like monster companion, and he also had the mind ability and really it said that kind of controlled and took advantage of like Nax's weaker disposition and also kind of fed into his vices to control and have a lot of power for himself. Both the men were incredibly evil, drove the kingdom into economic ruin, and created a lot of division within the kingdom and in general were just horrible tyrants who did whatever they wanted. Fire is actually the daughter of Cansrell and a human um, and she has his ability to read minds. That's where she gets the ability from and growing up she's been raised separate um, and obviously most of her life is trying to not be the monster that her father was even though everyone kind of expects her to become that monster and she grew up having to basically navigate her father's moods because while he would willingly torment everyone else he would do anything to protect her so she had to basically walk a very complicated line to ensure that her father wouldn't hurt a people around her I'll say fire in its opening 100 pages is very dark. The Kingdom of Dells has gone through a lot with its previous rulers and also this book opens on fire now as an adult. King Nax and Carsnell ha are no longer there. They've passed away and the son of King Nax, um, King Nash, is trying to kind of bring the kingdom back together with his brother who's like in charge of his armies and they're trying to basically carve a different path and be different people um than their father was so that's kind of like the intro of this book and fire at least so far she's kind of again been very isolated she lives on this like small estate and there she has i guess a, a friend turned boyfriend and she has a father figure there i'll say the companion and i imagine there's just going to be an definitely discussed in this book. The boy that she's currently with, Archer, who she grew up with and is her friend, obviously they care about each other. He is yeah. incredibly protective in a way that is definitely abusive. And then coupling that, because, because Fire is half monster, she is incredibly beautiful and people are drawn to her because of this. Because she's a monster, people don't really respect her as a human and therefore they're very free with their hands and their thoughts. So she's constantly having to navigate untoward attention towards herself from anyone and everyone, which also has created a lot of lasting impact on her as a character. So I'm definitely just in the beginning parts of this book. I definitely feel like there's going to be quite the centered plot between Fire and the brother of the king, Brigaine, who hates her because of her father. And he also kind of hates himself because of his father. I think they're going to become connected and like work together to try to bring the kingdom back together. And I cannot wait for it. And I'm also excited to see the journey Fire is going to go on. And what I imagine is going to be a journey of her kind of gaining her own independence and her own voice and like being comfortable with herself and her power and kind of separating herself from her father's legacy. But yeah, first 100 pages, really good very dark though much darker than i remembered in terms of like an origin story and this alternate kingdom is really interesting with kind of the monsters being part of it um and having like a slightly different magical touch than grace thing i'm gonna read a bit more now obviously i'm hoping to read almost all of this tonight and then reading bitter blue tomorrow but i don't feel like that's going to be an issue given honestly how good this is i feel like i can already see the ship forming between Brigaine and Fire, and I cannot wait to see how that unfolds. And Archer as a character is terrible and I hate him. But anyway, so I am going to get more coffee and do a bit more reading, but I wanted to give you guys a check-in because 
I already read 100 pages. Look at me go. Okay, I snuck a little more K-drama in, but I grabbed a second cup of coffee and I'm gonna get back to reading. I wanna try to get to page like 150, 170 um, this afternoon of this. Obviously my goal is to basically try to read this entire thing tonight or at least most of it. And as I said, I'm already really loving it, but I think Fire is going to be a really incredible main character. So I also think this might be a little more angsty in the romance department, which I'm honestly a little excited about. So I'm gonna pick this up now. It's me. I'm here with a reading update and oh my gosh, I'm feeling a lot of things. One, I'm like trying to like articulate this in the best way that I can, but I just feel like this novel is so softly put together and it's done in a way that really represents the main character fire so with context i've obviously referenced fire quite a bit her traumatic childhood and being a half monster it has basically ostracized her from society and to further explain to you it's not just because she's beautiful and just because she's a half monster it's also because like her power itself i think like entrances people to be i can't think of a better word but like suddenly obsessed with her and then depending on who they are their intentions kind of continue from there from harm to just being like weirdly very interested so that's also something she has to navigate as well as having a monster a literal monster for a father growing up she's not had very many safe places to turn to for love so this has manifested itself in a few different ways obviously she has a father figure and Brocker, who has taken care of her since she was a young child. Um, and then obviously she seeks love in another character, Archer, who we've seen from the beginning. But his love is possessive, his love is jealous. His love doesn't come free. And to see her have to stumble through and navigate his feelings breaks your heart. And it makes me just feel so deeply for Fire as a main character. And that sort of, the beginning of this novel and then obviously as I said this book takes place in a kingdom that has kind of been torn apart by the previous rulers like terrible deeds and so because of this there are lords within the region who are trying to like seize power from the crown but the son of the once terrible king bring back fate to the crown and kind of unite the country again um and Fire, our main character, is close with those boys' his mother, and while she's there and the sons are visiting her keep, she like senses someone, like a spy, they, what she perceives as a spy, in the king's rooms. So it is requested after this moment that Fire travel across the kingdom to the central city to kind of help in this investigation, and kind of she kind of gets thrown more directly into politics. She travels there with the son. Um, and the leader of the guard, Brigane, who I've already mentioned, and they have a complicated relationship with each other initially. <sighs> There's so much that's beginning to happen, so I'm very much in the journey. They're transporting themselves from Fire's home to the castle keep, and part of it is them, you know, learning more about each other, but part of it too is Fire just gaining freedom in a way that she's never really experienced before. She's still having to go through all of the things I previously mentioned, but she is traveling you know, in her own mind and body. She's away from Archer. She's away from the place that she has basically lived and grown her entire life. And she's going to a castle to, you know, do something to help. And it's like different, I think, than she perceived she would ever be able to do. Um, also just seeing her interact with the soldiers that are like set to protect her, as well as again, getting closer to Brigade. There's just so much like soft, feelings of understanding and empathy and again because fire can kind of touch into people's emotions emotions are just very central to this story too and i don't know fire as a character is just like so softly powerful and i'm just excited to see her journey throughout this entire book it feels like a lot of personal shame and fear and it's just i don't know it's just really emotional to read this i guess is what i'm trying to say it's like a very layered story because of that because on the surface there's politics and there's you know conspiracy at play and there's traveling and there's probably going to be a romance but there's just so much emotion there as well and human suffering that it's layered and i don't know i i feel like i'm not being very articulate but like i just want so much for fire to find happiness wait anyway, i'm gonna keep reading i'm definitely gonna try to get over the 200 page mark before i take another break for tonight try to get halfway through this book is just like <laughs> making me feel a lot of things and again it's dark and it has a lot of topics i would say trigger warning for abuse i would say trigger warning for depression 
but yeah, I'm gonna get back to it. <sighs> this book is like hitting me in the feels a lot. I'm officially like halfway through on part two. Ugh, this book is starting to heat up for a variety of reasons. For one, Fire's beginning to grapple with the fact that she can have power and be powerful and use her own skills and talents without having to be her father. And two, just the general war is starting to amplify and kind of preparations for a larger conflict within this kingdom is kind of coming to a head. Um, and she's beginning to essentially just become more involved in the effort to help prevent the kingdom from falling and helping Brigane and other members of the court. And she's also just becoming more involved in the court, meeting more characters and making friends or just learning and being involved in like different things day to day that was that is definitely like larger than anything she was able to be involved with when she was kind of in her small little corner of the world with Archer and Brocker. So it's so good so far. Like I can't put this book down. <laughs> I've read so much of it today. I'm still feeling like a lot of emotions. I just find Fire to be a character that is I don't know, like, like you just want to root for her <laughs> in so many different ways, but I'm going to take a bit of a break from reading. I've read a lot, but I'll obviously read more tonight. Again, I'm going to try to finish this or at least get like to page 400 or like 375 or something and then finish it in the morning, but I'm feeling so many things right now. Goodness, though, it's already evening. It is time for pajamas. Oh man, I don't know why I thought walking into a dark room would be a logical thing to vlog. I remember fire being emotional being emotional the first time I read it. But I think, again, rereading it as an adult, I'm just appreciating aspects of the story I might not have just noticed or like read too deeply in when I was younger, um, which just makes me happy because it just, I, I don't know, I think when you reread any series that you love so much as a kid, you're always a little nervous to pick it up as an adult. But I can say now with full certainty of finishing Graceling and being halfway through Fire, like this one really holds up. But I think I found like a lot of things that I, appreciate more reading it now that I'm older than when I was even younger. So I loved it then, I'm loving it now, and I'm grateful for it. But it's time for PJ and figuring out dinner. And I need to decompress a bit emotionally from where I'm at in that book. So I just have so many people I want to protect in fire and it's hurting my heart, okay? Hi friends. I put pajamas on, I'm back in these sweatpants, but I want to show off my new Snoopy tee. He's got sunglasses on, which I'm a big fan of. But yeah, I bought a Snoopy summer option, you know? Just expanding my Peanuts wardrobe. Very important, you know, very important 2021 goal of mine. But it has like a cute little graphic of him sleeping underneath a palm tree on the back. But anywho, I'm in, I'm in my comfies. Got dressed, that's over now. Let the relaxing commence. I'm gonna watch more of my K-drama. I've decided between the K-drama I'm watching and Kristen Cashore's books, I'm just riding a wave of emotion. And I'm just gonna, you know, lean into it versus try to fight the tears because they're here and plentiful is what I'm trying to say. We ordered pizza. Saturday night all right, people. Oh, it's like this. We ordered two because that's who we are. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Looks delicious. Very warm. Success. All right, so we are back on the crown. I finished my K-drama, emotionally overwhelmed by it. So, you know, back to the historical drama that is the crown. And then I do plan to do my reading tonight, but I was really productive today. So I'm gonna watch a few hours of TV, have a cider, and uh, relax with Clay and Matilda. Relaxing. In your Naruto shirt. Arto shirt. Made some oven s'mores, one more episode of The Crown I'm gonna watch, and then I'm gonna go read more fire, but had to make this impeccable dessert. Hi friends, so I am done watching The Crown for the evening, which means I'm gonna be focusing on, just drop my retainer, reading. So I got to page 225. Um, I pretty much have I'm exactly like halfway through. So I think it's a little later than I was hoping it would be. If I'm being honest with myself. So I'm gonna try to read about 150 pages and then finish this up tomorrow morning. I just have to edit a bit tomorrow. So I have the whole day tomorrow to read this and then get as far as I can in Bitter Blue. But again, I'm loving fire so much. And I'm gonna re jump in now because I just wanna know what happens next. So time to find out. <laughs> Hi everyone, it's very late. 
days of sleep, but I have passed the 300 page mark of fire. I'm gonna be brief because I am sleepy. <laughs> um, but uh, it's escalating really nicely. I would say fire from a plot standpoint is pretty political. It's very much centered on court politics in this sort of main kingdom and city. Combining with the fact that fire's ability kind of leans more into espionage versus like hand-to-hand -hand combat, which we saw more in Graceling. And there's kind of a lot of political maneuverings from like these two different armies and many different people trying to vie for power in this one kingdom. So it's very like political focus, which I like. Um, there's also a lot of characters, well, a lot more characters, I should say. Like there's some really great interaction between Fire and her guards and Fire herself is kind of opening herself up to making all different types of connections, um, friendship and beyond that, which has been really lovely to see. And then to speak, I guess, more about the romance, that is definitely a slow burn, and I'm soft for too. Like, I thought I would, was going to be angsty going in, but I would say it's actually one that's been incredibly compelling. Um, and at the heart of it, it's sweet. And it's a lot about like second chances and like accepting love from people again, like allowing yourself to be loved freely without being altered or held back. Like, I don't know. It's really sweet and it makes me really happy to read as it's been developed uh, through this book too, which I really thought it was going to be like a hate to love angst moment and like for like a hot second there was angst, but then it was quickly dissolved and it's changed to something quite different in this like slow burn friendship, communication, getting to know each other sort of vibe and it's been really lovely, but it's late as I said. I'm making very good progress. I'm going to finish this tomorrow morning with no problem and then jump into Bitter Blue, but I'm loving Fire. I think the characterization and everything is just really layered and I like it a lot. Anyway, it's time for bed. Good morning, everyone. I have coffee. I have my book, which I'm going to start reading soon, but first I'm wrapping up editing my vlog, which I'm posting today. I got dressed. My video is edited and uploaded. These overalls are a workhorse, I'll tell ya. But now I'm going to finish Fire. I have like exactly 100 pages. I read like 50 pages before I started this vlog clip, so I'll tell you guys some of my thoughts and feelings. But oh my gosh, the intrigue of this is getting out of hand. And Fire and Brigain, I'm so soft for. Just ugh, one of my favorite pairings in a long time. But anyway. I'm gonna finish this right now. That's the plan. And then Clay and I are gonna just hang out, watch some football. I'm being very spoiled because Clay is actually cooking me breakfast this morning. And I his, uh, I know, and his uh, national champions. I right, pull them out, but I've got needy hands. <laughs> <laughs> so, with 100 pages left of fire, things are heating up. <laughs> fire heating up. But we're definitely in the home stretch of kind of like a lot of the stuff that's been of the conflict itself and again this is a much more intrigue focused novel um we're currently at like a gala and there's all of these individuals who are plotting against each other and fire is using her abilities which she has been kind of growing into throughout the series to help kind of control and disseminate all the needed information so the kingdom can kind of stay ahead of its enemies the construction of this i think is so well done there's like so many threads and plots and you're trying to like break everything down just like fire is and not to mention there's just like layers and layers and layers of like lying which is really cool to kind of uncover and i just feel like uh christine cashore did a really awesome job creating like a conflict that is really focused on fire strength like in graceling katza was a fighter so we saw her do a bunch of survival based things fighting and just like surviving through the wilderness versus fire and her ability provides her like great um ability to kind of kind of uncover people's deceptions in extreme social settings so we're in a ball by the way balls and galas within a fantasy setting are always my favorite types of scenes everyone's dressed up people who are secretly in love with each other do that thing where they look at each other and don't say anything and just stare i love it so there's that but there's also like a lot of stakes at this ball as well and honestly the plot twists are happening left and right um and it's just really kind of catching me by surprise and i'm just loving this book honestly in some ways, I might love this more than Graceling. 
which I thought I would never say because of how much I love Graceling, but there's just the conflict, the characters, the romance in this. I am just swept away. I love it. I mean, both those books are incredible, but I am just like really into fire right now. I have like 20 pages left of fire. But look at this beautiful breakfast Clay cooked me. Delish. Hey everyone, so I'm happy to report I have finished fire. So two out of three books read for this vlog. Look at all those pages. I loved fire, honestly. <sighs> like, I felt like it was a beautiful portrait of like growth and grief and like second chances as I've already mentioned. It was beautiful and I just loved every single second of it. So this was an absolute joy and it also had some really cool connections to Graceling. This is actually set before the events of Graceling and there are a few like connections I'll just say between them. Um, but now, Ha ha! I am on the third book of the Graceling Ron series, which is the longest book, but I have faith I'll be able to read most of this tonight and then I'll maybe finish it tomorrow morning. Um, but this is actually set after the events of Graceling and we follow our main character, Queen Bitterblue. And within Bitterblue, we actually follow a character we have encountered before within Graceling as a young child, but now she is a young adult and she is a young queen of the Monsia Kingdom, which is a part of the Seven Kingdoms realm um, and she's essentially working to rebuild her court and the surrounding lands and destroy the legacy of her monstrous father who we've encountered a few times throughout the series again i think this is set maybe like 10 years after the events of graceling so i'm really excited to see this i loved bitter blue as a small side character within graceling so i'm excited to see her one grown up a little bit more and see her confront her own trials and tribulations um this is the book i probably remember the least given that i think i've read graceling and fire a few times before this reread versus i think i've only read this one once so i'm really thrilled to be jumping back into this and rediscovering it it has some beautiful like end pages throughout it which just bring me a lot of joy but it's over 500 pages so i'm hoping to get into the 200s today and then wrap the book up probably tomorrow or just as far as I can get today given that it's kind of afternoon already but I'm gonna jump into this now third and final book of this probably super long reading vlog also I wanted to show off that I got some very exciting book mail I have a physical copy of winter keep now which is which is again out now in stores but look how beautiful these new illustrated covers oh my gosh those end pages are just stunning how exciting it's coffee time. I'm almost out of coffee, actually. I might need to throw a whole pot. Oh, just enough. The dregs, friends. All right, coffee, and it's time for me to start. Bitter blue. Alrighty, friends. I'm watching some playoff football. I need to deal with those boxes, but I am starting bitter blue. Um, I don't even know how many pages I've read so far at this vlog. I think it's like probably around the 700 page mark. And then obviously with this, I'll be into the thousands. So time to get started. I'm really excited. Um, this kingdom is in the seven kingdoms where the Graceling is set, but it borders the Dells, which is where fire is set. So I'm hoping there's some cross, like some cameos, um, but we shall see. But I'm going to start this now. Hi. So I've been watching football, having just a relaxing Sunday. I'm about to put my pajamas on, but I wanted to let you know, look at that. I've read over hundred pages of Bitter Blue so far and uh, it's so good. The synopsis that I kind of gave is definitely kind of the information I have to give you. Like Bitter Blue, young queen, she is trying to rule her kingdom. And in an actual contrast to our two previous main characters, she doesn't actually have um, like a magical power. She's not graced and she's not, you know, she doesn't have like a special ability. She's just a girl who's actually very good at math, which, you know, in some ways can be considered a special ability. But in the beginning of the book, she's beginning to kind of have this suspicion that she is being lied to by some of her advisors. And she can't deduce why, because it seems like the lies are kind of inconsequential, but they're starting to add up. And at the beginning of the book too, she decides to start to take matters in her own hands because part of a lot of her questions is about the kingdom itself she's kind of kept very much in the castle so she begins to sneak out and sneak into bars to listen to storytellers and there she meets two individuals um teddy and saf who kind of have like an unclear background but it seems that they're writing a dictionary so i feel like a lot of this book has to do with like literacy and writing 
and stories, which I think is a cool setup and premise. And already we're seeing some fave characters from other books. A lot of fun in and itself, just the cameos, which makes sense because Bitter Blue is very connected to Graceling, just set eight years after the events of it. Um, but I'm really liking this right away. Bitter Blue is a main character. I already knew I loved her, but seeing her grow up and, you know, trying to make sense of a very complicated job, um, it's really good so far and engaging. So I've read 100 pages. I'm about one fifth of the way through, making good progress. And uh, I'll probably take a bit of a break from reading, make dinner and just kind of hang out for a while, but I'll be able to definitely get back to it tonight and get to the 50% 50 50 mark. I'm freshly laundered and whole. <laughs> Clay made us a cheese plate and I read 50 more pages of Bitter Blue, so I'm 150 pages in. I actually think I'm gonna be able to get over 300 pages tonight. I think I'm, I'm gonna shoot for 400. I'm gonna be aggressive, Clay. Might as well keep, keep going. This is the most I've read in a weekend, probably in my life. It feels great, to be honest. All right, everyone, I'm gonna make dinner. I have some chicken tikka masala from a meal kit delivery. I've been living off those meal kit deliveries over the past couple, honestly all year <laughs> i hate going to the grocery store so i'm gonna make that it sounds super super good just in my sweats obviously gonna put my apron on i'm just like narrating my life right now anyway i'm gonna cook maybe watch an episode of the crown and then get back to reading i'm gonna like sit down and have a good 100 page marathon session talk to you guys about it take a couple hours break and then read before going to bed i also need to decide on the next K-drama I want to watch. I'm really excited to pick one out. I'm deciding between two, Hotel de Lune and Crash Landing on You. I need to buy the K-drama streaming service, but I'm gonna watch some more on Netflix before I do that. Now I'm rambling. Time to make dinner. Pulled out the rice cooker because I am like 0 for 5 with cooking rice on the stove. I forget it and burn it every time. So we're just going back to Old Faithful. Um, but I'm also cooking onions and chicken together. I think this is a pretty quick meal. Um, that should be really tasty. So here's that. And uh, yeah, that's my update. We're in tomato paste and some seasoning and I'm about to add water and cream to it and then cook it down. Now this simmers for a little while. Top it with some rice. It's gonna be very yummy. Bon appetit everyone. And yes, I decided to add some butter to my rice because I love myself. Hi. So dinner is over and consumed, so I'm retreating back into the bedroom to do some reading. I'm gonna sit in here and my goal is to read about 100 pages to get to page 250 before like later this evening and then I'll do like another big sprint before I go to sleep with the goal of getting to page 400. I think if I get to page 250, it should not be a problem at all. And not to mention, I'm already really interested in this book particularly because I feel like, I like that it's very much set in a city and I feel like um, while fire was set at a court, there wasn't so much exploring the actual people and like day to day of the actual functioning city around the court itself, which this has a lot more of that. But anyway, I am going to sit down and do some reading. Hello everyone. So surprise, surprise, I'm back because hello. Oh, Matilda's scratching at the door, that mad woman. I've read another hundred pages, which means past 250 page mark and I am off topic so proud of myself I've read so much over the past three days but it's also just been so much fun and in general too I just want to shout out Kristen Cashore because I've read all these books back to back to back to back obviously and I would say like on a surface level these books have similarities each of them follows kind of like a young adult or a young woman coming into her power coming into her responsibility and ultimately like what it means for them to be happy so the books they each go on their own like personal journey to achieve you know finding themselves essentially in a lot of ways but also say each of the books are incredibly distinct from one another which i really appreciate for one all of the female protagonists are incredibly different each of them have different priorities and wants and desires out of life they've all had different journeys to where they are in this life therefore they have different emotional 
you know, impacts to their person and what they prioritize and what they look for is different. And also their responsibilities and desires out of life are all different. And all of those things are kind of celebrated individually throughout the series as a whole. Um, particularly too, I would say the structure of the plot is very distinct between each one. Graceling is very much like a more of a quest centered story has a lot more action whereas in fire it had a lot more like court politics and intrigue given fire's abilities in it itself and it also kind of centered upon like a larger kingdom based conflict like kind of a, a civil war versus bitter blue is much more focused on bitter blue coming into her ability to rule so there is conflict internal conflict but it's much more of the guise of like this is a city and a kingdom that has been rebuilding and like coming out of having a very dark period of its history and like moving beyond that um so it has a lot more like city-based politics not so much court based politics which they're definitely there but like bitter blue has to go out and interact with the people of her kingdom which wasn't really a huge part of the first two books um in this realm based series so i just appreciate that each one has like distinct plot points and storylines and christian kashore takes so much care to build these characters and you just grow to love them so much and you grow to understand them so well and i just feel like I don't know they're just like really lovely stories and i've really enjoyed reading all of them so much including bitter blue um and this one i'll say is like extra fun because of the references and the characters that we see throughout this from the first two books um just like as a fan but yeah i am loving this i am about halfway through so obviously making good progress Zaf and teddy also great names um and bitter blue and just there's just a lot of people in this book which i just appreciate too anyway i'm going to probably read a little bit more but then i'll probably take a break and watch some of my k drama but then i'll get back to reading and try to read as much as i possibly can tonight i went out and bought us new ice cream vanilla but this one i'm really excited about it's peanut butter marshmallow crunch sounds delicious gonna crack into this tonight i think i might just have vanilla because i have some incredible rainbow sprinkles that i want to use but thrilled it's time everyone i've decided on my next drama it's ice cream o'clock people halfway through the first episode and i can already tell i'm gonna love it <laughs> millie really is just a lounging queen watched the first episode of Crash Landing on You, and I can already say, hooked. <laughs> Doesn't take much, I'll be honest, but I'm gonna hang out with Millie. She and I are here, and I'm gonna get back to reading, which I'm also really excited about because I'm loving Bitter Blue. Um, goal is to get to page 400, I'm on 250, so I'm just gonna sit down and stay focused. If I don't do a check-in tonight, it's because laser focused and it's getting late. So I'm just trying to read as much before I inevitably fall asleep. But I will wrap up this whole vlog tomorrow. Um, I'll probably do a bit more reading in the morning. Um, but then I'll just give you guys my final thoughts and feelings. But yeah, anyway, I'm going to get to reading. Hello, everyone. Good morning. I'm up bright and early because I want to finish quickly the last about 160 pages of Bitter Blue. As I kind of mentioned, my goal last night was to get to page 400, which I was successfully able, successfully able to do. But before I read and wrap up this book, I do feel like I kind of want to give a little more clarity on my thoughts and feelings up to this point because I am really enjoying it. So up to this point, I kind of mentioned that Bitter Blue is trying to navigate ruling her kingdom. She feels like she's being deceived by her um, advisors and she doesn't really understand why. And there's also kind of a thievery at play like things from the castle are being stolen and that is kind of what initially motivates her to go out into the kingdom itself to find the truth for herself like learn the stories meet people and just try to get a better grip on her kingdom itself and that's where she meets Saf and Teddy who are kind of involved in their own underground operations and through that friendship and that development of feeling she begins to realize more about her kingdom than ever before I think a lot of this book too is the fact that the previous King Lek, Bitter Blue's father, was a terrible tyrant and monster. And given his ability, he was basically able to control anyone and everyone. And there's a lot of memories and a lot of pain that has not been confronted since his fall. And in fact, it seems that Bitter Blue's castle is more focused on the future. 
but the reality is no one in the kingdom including bitter blue can move on to a future until they confront the past pain that they all experienced um another aspect too is about bitter blue uncovering the culture of Moncia. she's from there obviously she has a kingdom there but again because of lex treachery his focus was his own intentions and his horrors were prioritized over you know long-standing traditions present within this kingdom so two she's also on a truth finding mission to learn more and to share more about the kingdom not to mention there are so many cameos within this book it's amazing like the amount of poe i've gotten throughout this uh book has been incredible obviously katza and i have a feeling that we're gonna get even more but i'll hold off and wait and see on that which is just incredible um because all these books uh are very connected even fire which takes place significantly before graceling has a very prominent connection to this series in and itself but yeah i'm really enjoying this story i feel like the topic and following bitter blue on this quest and also the anxiety of following bitter blue as she's trying to uncover like the deceptions of the people that she's supposed to trust the most has been obviously really interesting to read i also particularly like the romance i feel like it's definitely one of those like star-crossed lovers kind of thing like young people who fall for each other so much but given who they are they also cannot fully be themselves and there's some deception going on there as, as well like there's a lot of deception happening in this book like people lying to themselves lying to others either because they don't want to confront the truth or for their own personal gain um or because they're not able to be fully truthful in the current political climate like there's just a lot happening that i appreciate so anyway i'm gonna sit down and read the last 160 pages hi friends it's a bit later and i can officially say i have finished bitter blue i read the last 100 and goodness i want to say like 60 i read the last 139 pages and i have to say just like unrelated to the plot the illustrations and drawings throughout this are stunning and I love them. And I do really feel like they added to the overall ambiance of the story. Some of them are like maps and stuff. It's just stunning. But I have to say, I really ultimately loved Bitter Blue quite a bit. And I would say in so many ways, the conclusion of this novel is in a lot of ways incredibly heartbreaking. Um, so much of this book was confronting the past pain that the previous king... Um, enacted and forced other people to do and a lot of the mystery that was happening within the castle was also inevitably connected to this history and past as well and a lot of this book was doing an in-depth kind of analysis of those horrors so something i do really want to make sure to call out is trigger warnings for assault abuse suicide there's just a lot of different very dark topics that are discussed at length within this series um, but so much too of this book was about confronting and growing and taking on that pain and coming through it, coming yourself after that. And Bitter Blue, our main character, took on not just her own personal trauma and pain, but also the kingdom's pain and created a future where it's not about burying the past, acknowledging the past and creating like a brighter future and a brighter kingdom for herself and all of her people in her land. Um, I just feel like there's so much empathy written in all of Kristen Cashore's pages and just so much like feeling and pain, but sharing openly about emotions too, which is just something I think is incredible. Outside of that, I felt like the overall palace intrigue and the thievery was wrapped up pretty well. And I also really appreciated how Kristen Cashor approached the romance within this novel um, a lot. And I think it was a choice. And I'm not gonna say anything more than that, but I'm just gonna say I really respect kind of how Kristen Cashore took the romance on within this story and how she kind of treated first love within this book I thought was really well done and ultimately I thought Bitter Blue was an excellent novel I'm rambling on quite a bit and obviously it is the third and final book to my Graceling Realm reread for this weekend and I can happily say I have now successfully read all three books the amount of pages I've read this weekend enter over the 1000 page mark and I have to say I'm very proud of myself but I enjoyed every single second of this it also means I am now perfectly ready to jump into the fourth book Winter Keep which is again out now in stores but seriously guys if you guys have not read The Graceling Realm or haven't reread re it in a long time now is the time to do so the new covers are incredible the story holds up so well I loved every single second of 
love it. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. <laughs> but yeah, that's all I have for you guys today. The sun is so bright. Um, but I hope you enjoyed, as I said, again, and I will see you soon with another video soon. Goodbye.